All right, my friends, I'm excited. We're gonna teach you how to drive stick shift today. And I have created this systematic, very standardized way of teaching stick because I enjoy teaching people how to drive stick shift. Even though a lot of people are initially intimidated, I promise you by the end of the series, you're gonna be driving like a pro. So this is part one. Part one is gonna be basics, how to get the car from stopped, stationary to moving, which is the hardest part for a newbie. Part two is intermediate things like downshift rev matching and starting on a hill. And then part three is advanced techniques, things like double clutch and heel toe. So number one, you want a nice open empty parking lot like this, preferably with not a lot of cars, not a lot of people. You do not want to be first learning stick shift on a road that has actual cars driving. That's gonna be very dangerous. And I am assuming that you know how to drive automatic. So let's dive in. First of all, how do you start the car? Well, you have this third pedal here. So you have the brake, gas, as always. Clutch all the way in, foot on the brake, turn the key, and there you go. Now the car is on. So right off the bat, you're gonna notice two things that are different about a stick shift vehicle versus an automatic vehicle. So number one is that third pedal, the clutch. And unlike the gas and the brake, which you kind of tend to, you know, half press, half press, you're rarely ever going all the way in on the brake or all the way in on the gas when you're just driving around, puttering around town. With the clutch, you are gonna go all the way in and then all the way out. You don't do the half press. That's not gonna allow you to disengage the engine from the transmission. The second thing you'll notice is the gear selector right here. So in any car, left and up is first. Now, to move this, I need to press the clutch in all the way. So first is left and up, left and down is second, middle and up is third, middle and down is fourth, right and up is fifth, right and down is sixth. So the way that this clutch works is, well, actually let's back up. In an automatic transmission vehicle, you can have the engine spinning and idle, you know, around 600 RPM, and then the wheels are stationary. And that's because there is a torque converter. So imagine two fans, surrounded by fluid, such that the fan attached to the engine can spin while the fan attached to the wheels, which are stationary, is stopped. And when you let go of the brake, then these will slowly match speed and then the car starts rolling forward, which is why on an automatic transmission, if you let go of the brake while you're in drive, the car will start creeping forward. That doesn't happen in a stick shift. The way stick shift works is there's hard contact. There's no fans with fluid, there's a clutch. And either you're making contact or you're not and there's a kind of a middle ground where you're slipping a little bit, but let's not worry about that right now. So when you want to change the gears, you always have to press the clutch in and then move and then uh, clutch out to reconnect the engine and the transmission. The only two ways for the engine to be running with the wheel stationary is if either one, I'm in neutral like this, neutral is the middle where you can wiggle this left and right, or my clutch is in. And see, I'm in first gear right now, but because my clutch is in, the engine and the wheels are decoupled, so you know, no, no problem. But if I let go of the clutch right now, while I'm in first gear, I'm gonna stall it. And that's you stalling the engine. Stalling is going to happen. Trust me, it will definitely happen uh, when you're first learning to drive stick, not a big deal. That's actually not really gonna damage the car much either. What is gonna damage the car is if you press a lot of gas, while you are riding the clutch. You're gonna burn out the clutch, but again, standardized process here. We're not gonna do any of that if you follow along with the instructions. Oh, one other quick thing. In a automatic transmission vehicle, you can put the gear selector into park, right? And then you let go of the brake, the car doesn't go anywhere. Stick shift is different. So I have my handbrake enabled because if I have my feet off the brake and I'm in neutral, the car can roll. So if I'm like this, the car is actually, you know, if I, if I scoot a little bit, you can see the car is rolling slightly, right? So that's why I have the clutch, or sorry, the handbrake engaged. Okay, so the actual driving stick part, enough talking, right? So what I want you to do, the engine's on, you're in neutral, and left foot is off the clutch. I call this the reset position. So right foot on the brake, left foot off the clutch, and this is in neutral. Now the first thing we do, clutch in all the way, left and up for first, let go of the brake, and then slowly let go of the clutch. And as you slowly let go, it'll slowly catch, and you'll feel the car start rolling forward. Now to stop, brake, clutch in, 
neutral and reset. So technically, if you have your left foot on the clutch this whole time, you the car you know is running and, and everything's fine. But this is bad for the throwout bearing. It's one of the components of wear and tear on a car. It's a bad habit. Sometimes people will stop at a red light like this. We call this riding the clutch. So they're in first gear, foot, they're holding the foot on the clutch, not good. So don't get in that habit. I want you to reset fully. Again, reset is left foot off the clutch, right foot on the brake, gear selector in neutral, those three things. And we're gonna keep doing this again and again. We're gonna do five, 10, 15, 20 reps, however many you need to feel comfortable. And we are not touching the gas at all, okay? We're only messing with the gas, or sorry, with the, with the brakes and the clutch, okay? So we're gonna do that same thing. Actually, let me wait for this car to get out of the way. Okay, clutch in, left and up for first, foot off the brake, slowly off the clutch. Now, if you let off the clutch too fast, you're gonna stall it, okay? So I'm going really slow. And every car has a different sticking point. So let's reset again. So again, I foot, right foot on the brake, I clutch into neutral, clutch out. So left foot is off the clutch, right foot's on the brake, and we're in neutral. Every car has a different sticking point where the clutch starts rubbing, right? And right now we're going really slow because we don't know where that is. But as you get more familiar with the car, you'll be able to let off quickly right to that sticking point and then allow the, the engine and the wheels to match speed and then slowly let off from there. But for now, we're just gonna slowly let off all the way from the bottom until we get to that sticking point. So again, clutch in, left and up for first, right foot off the brake, slowly off the clutch, super slow. And again, if you stall, that means you're going too fast off the clutch. Now we're rolling, and how do we stop? Right foot on the brake, clutch into neutral, and left foot off the clutch. Reset position and do it again. And again, left foot clutch in, left and up, right foot off the brake, slowly off the clutch. And then one thing I've noticed is that people do find it a little bit challenging to, to turn while they're learning this. So get into a straight line and then do the same thing. Now, because of the lighting, I'm actually gonna go all the way to the end and then turn around so that you guys can actually see. I feel like the sun directly in the camera is probably not ideal. So we're gonna do that again. Again, reset position, left foot off the clutch, right foot on the brake, neutral. Clutch in, left up, right foot off the brake, slowly off the clutch. Now, once you get the hang of this, once you've done this again, five, 10, 15, 20 times, however many you need to feel comfortable with this motion, we're gonna add gas. Now, the key thing is you only add a little bit of gas, and at the beginning, I want you to only add gas once the clutch is rubbing and engaging. If you add clutch beforehand, so if I added clutch right now and then shifted, that's gonna be a lot of friction. That's gonna cause wear and tear on the clutch, which we don't want. And when you get to more advanced things like dropping the clutch to accelerate hard, let's say you're doing a zero to 60 test or you're on the racetrack, that's different. Um, but again, more advanced technique, we don't need to worry about that right now. What I want you to do again is add a little bit of throttle a very small amount once the clutch is engaging. Once Remember that sticking point? That's where the clutch is engaging. Only once it's at that point, then you add throttle. So, same thing as before. Clutch in, left and up, right foot off the brake, slowly off the clutch. So now I feel it rolling. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of gas and continue letting off the clutch. And boom, that feels like a more normal acceleration, right? Whereas before it felt very slow. We're trying to get to that more you know, you're at a stop sign or a stoplight, what's the normal kind of acceleration you want? That's how you get it. So one more time, um, clutch in, left and up, and then once you get that little bit of engagement, 
right there. I can feel the car rolling. Now I add clutch or gas and let go of the clutch. Let's do that a few more times. Clutch in, left and up, right foot off the brake. Once the clutch starts clutching, once once the clutch starts catching, now we add a little bit of gas and continue letting off the clutch like that. Okay. So sometimes people will say you want to add gas and let go of the clutch at the same time. That is going to happen naturally as you get more comfortable. At the beginning, if you try doing that, you're going to burn the clutch out. That's why I don't teach it that way. Eventually, as you get more and more familiar with the, the feeling of the engagement point and adding gas at that engagement point, then you're just going to do both simultaneously like this, and it's pretty seamless, pretty straightforward. Now this is going to take you, again, maybe 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes, however long you need to feel comfortable. Um, and once you feel comfortable starting and stopping in first gear, then we're gonna to shift to second. And if that sounds intimidating, trust me, it's not. Getting into second gear is easier than starting from a stop. So again, I'm reset. Now all we're gonna to do to get from first into second is I'm gonna clutch in while I'm rolling because you wanna start from first gear. You don't wanna start from second in most instances. Driving in the snow and ice, that's a different story, advanced topic. So. I want to start from first. So we're going to be rolling in first, and then I'm going to have my foot completely off the clutch. We're like in gear rolling, right? Actually, let me just show you right now. We're in gear rolling, okay? Now what I'm going to do is clutch in, because remember, any time I move the gear selector, I need to clutch in. I'm going to pull it down into second, and then let go of the clutch. And now because the car, the, because the car is already rolling, you're not really going to have a risk of stalling it. So I'm not even going to add gas. I went into second, just like that. And because the car is rolling, I don't need gas. Because the gas, when you're first starting off, is is to make sure you don't stall the vehicle. Um, maybe I'm actually confusing you by saying that you don't need gas, because if you wanted to accelerate, then yeah, you need gas. But I'm trying to prove a point here that if the engine and the wheels are both spinning at the same speed, then it's not really an issue. Like the only time you're really going to stall the car is when you're close to standstill, close to stopped. That's what I'm trying to get at. All right, so let's do that again. So, reset position, left foot off the clutch, right foot on the brake, gear and gear selector in neutral. Clutch in, left and up. Slowly off the clutch, give it a little bit of gas, and now we're rolling. And to get into second, all we have to do, remember, let go of the gas when you shift. You do not want to have foot on the gas while you're pressing the clutch. You want to be one or the other. So my foot is on the gas right now. I'm going to let go, left foot on the clutch, pull it into second, let go of the clutch, and now I can add gas again. I can only add gas when I'm letting go of the clutch, not when I'm on the clutch. Okay. And then the same thing is going to apply going from second to third to fourth, etc. But um, similar to similar to how bicycle gears work, the higher speeds, higher gears are for higher speeds. So right now, if I tried going to six, I would lug my engine. It make this really this like sound as if it's struggling to turn because it is. It's like it's at a very low RPM, which is not ideal. So again, reset position: left foot off the clutch, right foot on the brake, gear selector in neutral, clutch in, left and up is first, foot off the brake, slowly off the clutch, give it a little bit of gas, and again to second. We let go of the gas, clutch in, clutch out, and then give it gas again. Just like that. So that is the hardest part of driving stick shift, I kid you not, is just getting comfortable with how things work when you do need to be on the clutch, when you do need to be moving the, sh the shifter, things like that. Everything else is going to fall into place 
based off of these fundamentals. So spend a lot of time practicing this, get comfortable with it. It should feel very intuitive. Like when I'm driving now, I don't, I don't think, oh, hey, should I be, um, should I be pressing this or that? It just kind of intuitively comes. It just naturally is, it feels right. And you're not gonna get to that point in a parking lot in 20 minutes, um, but be patient with it. It will come, it will feel natural, it will feel second nature. And I promise it's gonna be a lot easier. You won't even need to think about it. So in the next lesson, we're gonna cover intermediate techniques because what we did here is getting up to speed, right? Starting from first gear, then second, third, and so on. But what about when you are slowing down but wanna remain in gear? How do you go from sixth to fifth to fourth? How do you go, how do you downshift and rev match? We're gonna cover that in the next episode. I hope you guys found this useful. Much love, and I'll see you guys in that next one.